Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about three things you can do when splicing and soldering a wire to make it better. So for our demo, I've just got some stranded 22 gauge copper wire and that's what we're going to use. But this will work for any sort of stranded wire, no matter the size, the only caveat being of course, you're going to need a bigger iron if you go with some big wire. I'm just using a standard electronics uh, soldering station. It is the uh, KSGER T12 style station. Any electronics, you know, soldering get up is going to do you just fine. So, step one is going to be, of course, to strip the wire. And make sure, you, you make sure you've got at least an inch of wire, okay? The next step is going to be to tightly twist it. Just hold this end in your finger steady and rotate the other end away from you until you've got a nice tight twist. So we'll do that for both pieces of wire we're joining together. The tighter the twist, the easier it is going to take solder. Okay. So we've got two tight twists now. Please, for the love of God, do not grab your wires like this and twist them together. Wait, no. Take your wires, put them about halfway in the form of a cross, and then pinch them. Then what you want to do is you want to take the left-hand wire and start rolling it back over the other one. Then you do it with the right-hand wire. And if you've done this right, you should get a nice neat little splice there. That's not as neat as it could be, but it'll be fine. Now, when you're soldering them, you're going to want a little bit of tension on them. Okay? Next step make sure your iron is clean whether you use a sponge or the brass wool make sure your tip is shiny and once you've done that tin your tip take your solder i'm using uh this is tmi american solder this is 6040 rosin core 0.8 millimeter or 0.031 inch and just tin the tip, just like that. Not enough to worry about, but enough that you have some on there for heat transfer. Now, the big mistake a lot of people will make when they're doing this is to take and just glob a bunch of solder on there so you got a nice solder booger hanging on the bottom of your iron, and then try and wipe it on the joint. No, that's not right. We don't ever want to do that. We don't want to bring the solder on the iron to the joint. All right, let me uh, see if we can't zoom in here so I can get you a better view. That's pretty good. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is just to make sure the wires are clean. The cleaner they are, the better they're going to solder. And what I've got here is a little container of ruby fluid. I'm just going to put a couple of drops like that. This stuff is caustic, so be careful with it. Let me uh, grab the container and show you so you know what we're talking about here. This is ruby fluid. Soldering and tinning flux contains zinc chloride. But this is a strong flux. It'll clean up just about anything. So, we've twisted our wires tightly together. We fluxed our wires. We have a clean and tinned iron. Just make sure there's a little bit on there for thermal transfer. And then what you want to do is come to one of the ends and sit your iron on there. Now that sizzling you're hearing is the flux coming out. And then you want to feed the solder in almost on the opposite side of the wire. And once it's hot enough. You can see how it starts sucking it up.
and you end up with a nice joint. So that's uh, number one. All right, number two is going to be dealing with solid wire. And I've got some 22 gauge solid wire here. And the technique is going to be the same. But what's really important with solid wire is that you do not nick the wire when you strip it. If you if you nick the wire, <laughs> that's what I strip. Come on now. If you nick the wire when you strip it, then you are going to introduce a weak point. And every time you get a flex there, that is going to increase, and eventually it's going to break there. But our technique is pretty much the same. We want to find that middle point, pinch, then begin rolling one side, then the other side. Now with the, with the solid wire, as you can see there, you're not going to get those ends to lay down nicely. And that's fine. We're going to take care of them once we've soldered it up. So we have it in the holder. A little bit of flux. Our iron tip, is it clean and shiny? Yeah, it's getting a little dull. So once again, we want to make sure it is shiny and clean. We're going to put a little tinning on there. Helps with the thermal transfer. And again, just pick a point near the end, heat it up, and when it's hot, apply the solder like underneath if your iron is on top. And you end up with a nice joint. Then come in with a pair of flush cutters and nip those angry ends off so you don't have a problem. And you end up with a, a nice joint that you can then put some heat shrink on. And it works really well. Okay, and my final tip for you today is if you have to solder to the back of a pot like this, for instance, if you were doing guitar wiring or something like that, if you're going to do that, or anything where you're going to use the back of the pot as, as a ground plane, which is a very common thing, what I like to do is get some sandpaper. This is a 600 grit and scuff it. You don't have to scuff the whole thing. Just get yourself a spot where you intend on soldering it. There, you can see that there. And we will put that in a little holder here. Good. The next thing to do, if you have it available, is to use a soldering brass cleaning brush if you have it if you don't just go in there and clean out any of those sandpaper particles that might be there next flux this is flux is really important in this case here okay that's a lot of flux but that's all right now if you can turn your soldering iron up I'm going to turn it up to 400 degrees in this case and clean it. And then we're going to tin it. And we're going to tin the back of this pot. There. Now we've tinned the back of the pot. As you can see, oh, which I just launched. Halfway across the room. Okay, that wasn't hard to find. Luckily, it hit my leg and it just fell down to the floor. So, we are tinned. And then we have our wire we want to join to it, which I have also pre-tinned. But that's too much wire. So, make sure you 
cut it close. That's about two millimeters, maybe a little over an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths. That will be plenty. So again, clean iron, which has been tinned, thermal transfer. Now this is my method. You may have a different one. I just like to come in, heat up the solder, bring that wire in, hold it down. Wait till it cools. And now we've got a very hot, but a nice joint there. I just saw them mechanically and electrically. There isn't a whole lot of excess solder there. Everything looks good. You want to make sure you do it hot so that you do it quickly so that you don't end up burning up the internals of your pot. And my pot's still rolling nice and smooth. So everything's looking good. Copacetic, as it were. Alright? That is all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to uh, Noel Javier for uh, what he sent, which you'll see in an upcoming video. And again, a big thanks to Professor Dr. Doman from Deutschland for his contribution and support of the channel. It is much appreciated. Danke, Herr Professor. That's it. I'm out. Peace.